Welcome back friends. In the last tutorial, I introduced the Godot dialog editor that I use to edit and store dialog text for my video games. Since then, I've gotten a lot of fantastic feedback from you and a mountain of messages requesting more details regarding how to make a front end dialog player. Therefore, over the next few weeks, I'm going to release a few sub-tutorials demonstrating how to make a dialogue player that uses the story files generated by the dialogue editor. If you don't know what I'm talking about, now is a great time to watch the previous tutorial about how to acquire and use the Godot dialogue editor. Otherwise, let's continue and discuss what we have planned for our new dialogue player. In today's tutorial, we'll set up and configure the node tree for our basic dialogue player as well as create a new test story file for our player to read. With everything in place ready to go, in the next tutorial, we'll start a new GD script and code the basic functionality of our player. But we're not done just yet. Sometimes we need the ability to use variables in our dialogue text that change during runtime. So we'll work on a simple implementation that injects variables from your game into your dialogue text right before displaying to the screen. We'll cover an example of how to use the story file reader to manage multiple characters talking simultaneously across multiple dialogue boxes. Next, we'll spice things up a bit with a bit of choice through the addition of dialogue branching. And finally, if we're really lucky, I might try my hand at a bit of voice acting and add some audio to go along with our text dialogue. So, we have a lot to do. Let's get to it. We'll start by making a new scene with a basic node as its root. To the dialog player root node, add the control node that will be the root of the dialog box. Change the layout to full rect. This node will be used to hide and show our dialog box. To the dialog box control node, add a 9 patch rectangle node. I'll change the min rectangle size to 720 by 256, but you can make yours any size that feels right and I'll also center the layout. This node will serve as the main body of the dialog box. A small texture can be applied to the 9 patch rectangle nodes such that its border can scale gracefully without stretching the corners. You can use the texture that comes with this example project or make your own. We'll drag this texture into the 9 patch rectangles texture slot and set the patch margin to define the texture's border areas. For this example texture, a margin of 3 pixels on all sides works well. To the body 9 patch rectangle node, add a margin container node to control where the main text will show up inside the dialog box. Choose full rec for the layout and a margin of 16 48, negative 16, negative 48, works well with this size of dialog box. To the margin container, add a label node which will hold the dialog text. In the size flag property of the label node, change both the horizontal and vertical to fill and expand. If you'd like, you can add some filler dialog to the text property to see what it'll look like which I forgot to do myself here, but it will pop up later. To this label node, also add an animation player as a child. This animation player will be responsible for animating the visibility of the dialog text in the box. We'll come back to creating our animations later in the tutorial. Select the previous 9 patch rectangle and add a new 9 patch rectangle node. Change the min size to 180 by 48. This box will contain the name of the dialog speaker. Fill it with the texture using the same method as the main body, and I'll move it to the left slightly to give it some flair. Like before, to this 9 patch rectangle node, add a label node and set the layout to full. Set the Align and V-Align properties to Center. This label will contain the speaker's name. You can optionally enter a placeholder value to view the results. 
Once again, select the body 9 patch rectangle and add a third 9 patch rectangle node. Set the layout to bottom right and change the min size to 256 by 48. Add our 9 patch texture again like we did twice before. This 9 patch rectangle will become visible and prompt the player to press the spacebar when they're ready to continue with the dialogue. Like the speaker name's 9 patch rectangle, add a label and give it a full rec layout. Center the text using the inspector properties and fill the label with a useful message to the player. Then slide it nicely into place. To the spacebar 9 patch rectangle node, add another animation player. This animation player will make the press spacebar button dance up and down to grab the player's attention when it becomes visible. And with that, we have all our nodes in place, but you've probably noticed that our text is rather small. This is because we haven't added any fonts to our labels. To change the font, find the font property in the labels inspector. Click the empty tab and select the New Dynamic Font, then click the newly created Dynamic Font resource to open its properties. Uncollapse the Font menu to see the Font Data property. This is where you can drag and set any font you want. If you don't have any fonts, you can use the fonts that come with this example project, found in the Fonts folder. To change the font size, uncollapse the Setting menu and edit the Size property. Don't forget to go back to the speaker and the spacebar labels to change the fonts there too. With the font set, let's work on our animations. Click on the spacebar labels animation player and create a new animation. Add a new property track from the spacebar 9 patch rectangle node and look for and choose the rect scale property. Select the spacebar 9 patch rectangle node and click the animation tab again. Now we can keyframe the 9 patch rectangle's properties in the animation player. Make sure that the selected keyframe is frame 0 and press the key icon next to the scale property to set a keyframe. Next, move the selected keyframe to 0.5 seconds. Change the scale to 1.1 and press the key icon again. Finally, move the selected keyframe to 1 second, change the scale back to 1, and hit the key icon a final time. Toggle the Animation Looping button to loop the animation, and also toggle the Autoplay on Load button. Now whenever we run this scene, the Press Spacebar button will dance up and down. One animation down, and one to go. Select the Body Animation player. Create a new animation and a new property track for the body label's Percent Visible property. At 0 seconds, key the percent visible at 0%, and at 1 second, key the percent visible to 1. And let's not forget to save our work. Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of your very own dialogue player that's ready to accept some GD script. But we're not quite done yet. Let's set up a new story file that we'll use to test our dialogue player. 
With the XP Godot dialog system plugin installed and enabled, go to Project, Tools, XP Story File Editor. Create a new dialog record and give it a unique name and description, then press Edit. I've gone ahead and created these six nodes and linked them together. The idea here is that our dialog player will find the node with the start tag and will follow the links from there until it reaches the node with the end tag. Each dialog node contains the tags to delimit the speaker name as well as the dialog text to be placed in the main body of the dialog box. When you've finished editing your dialog nodes, go back to the story file editor and we'll save the story we've made so we can go back and add to it later. And we'll also save a baked story file to test our GD script in the next tutorial. With the node tree of our dialog player set up and saved, Let's press F6 to test our scene. What do you think? Looks pretty good to me. We're already halfway to a fully functioning dialog player. In the next tutorial, we'll add some GD script to our player, giving it the power to read, manage, and display story files from the dialog editor. In the meantime, if you're wondering what I'm working on in Godot from day to day, check out my Twitter page where I post devlogs. And if you're curious about what I do while I'm away from game dev and the keyboard, check out my new Instagram where I document my life in Japan. And as always, this example project will be available on GitHub on the Dave the Dev tutorial repo. All links in the description. Finally, a special congratulations and thank you for all the supporters who have helped this channel grow to over 1,500 subscribers. If you want to join our crew, Feel free to post questions or even a simple hello in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next dialogue player tutorial. Hope to see you there. Until then, happy devving!